As recounted in his autobiography, Building Bridges, Herb Bridge recounted receiving a video camera for his bar mitzvah, and he was transfixed. He said, quote, my folks friends pitched in together and gave me everything I'd need to make home movies with a camera, projector, and a screen. That was really something in 1938. Thanks to 20 or so friends, we have movies that go back to 1938. Since that time, Mr. Bridge created and appeared in many films, including family trips across the globe, his Navy career with fellow service members, scenes at the Ben Bridge jeweler downtown, in the Seattle store with his family and coworkers, and other important moments. The Washington State Jewish Archives is very fortunate to have three generations of Bridge family materials to steward for and to draw from and curate. Huge thanks and gratitude to the Bridge family for entrusting WSJHS and the University of Washington Library with these treasures and to tell these stories, as well as receiving the Bridges family support to invest in properly digitizing the films and videos. I recently spoke with Hannah Palin, moving image curator at the University of Washington Library Special Collections. Hannah managed the digitization process and will speak more about that, as well as UW's moving image collection. Yes, hi, my name is Hannah Palin. I am the moving image curator at the University of Washington Library Special Collection. Yeah, so I like to say that I'm in charge of the cool stuff. Um, I uh, work with all the film and videotape in our collections, um, and it can be anything from home movies to uh, commercial films. Sometimes we have uh, documentation from different uh, experiments, nothing gruesome, uh, uh, from the University of Washington. Um, we also have a very large uh, news collection. We have all of Cairo TV's um, uh, daily news library. So I'm in charge of all that kind of stuff. And um, my goal is to make it accessible and to let people know that it's there. And I digitize whatever I can. Um, it's, it has to be selective because there's so much of it, but um, my my, raison d'etre is to try to get it out to the public and let them know that there's amazing material to be had and seen and ex explored and enjoyed. So that's my job. So the, the Herbridge Film Collection is um, uh, over 50, I believe it's actually 60, um, uh, eight millimeter films and eight millimeter film was a was a home movie format that was used by mostly amateur filmmakers um, and it's when we got in the collection um, it's an enormous that's a lot of film it's hours and hours and hours of material um, and to be able to work on it the first step is to get it a little bit organized and thankfully the family was amazing at documenting what they had taken film of. So on each of the film cans, there was little teeny tiny list of exactly what it was and where they traveled and who they talked to. So our job was to take that and transcribe it and get it into a spreadsheet basically so that we could use it later. And because I don't have eight millimeter equipment um, to work with on site, I sent the entire collection, packaged it up very carefully and sent it to an amazing vendor that we work with on the East Coast. And um, then when we got it back, we were, we were able to ingest all, the, all that digital material into our preservation system and work on getting everything online and available. We were able to share it with the family immediately, which was very gratifying. And they were very happy too, <laughs> to see to see their relatives and some things they'd forgotten about and younger generations could also experience for what the what their grandparents and parents had done. So it was a lovely experience. Sure. You know, um, the first rule is to keep everything cool and dry uh, and to um, 
hold on to those original materials. So the, the, the films and the videotapes that you might digitize, um, don't throw the originals away because technology is always changing. And unless the original is really distressed, um, you might need to go back to it someday, or maybe the folks that inherit your collection might need to go back to it. It's, it's, if you think about all the crazy obsolete formats in the world, there have been a lot of times when it's like, darn, Beta Max wasn't the thing. Oh, ugh. or laser discs. Mm. So anyway, so um, hold on to the original materials, get them digitized if you can. Um, there's uh, some really good resources out in the world um, that moving image archivists like me have put out there. There's um, something, a, a site called filmforever.org and it's how to take care of your home movies. And it's a really nice, nicely laid out, gives you a really good idea of what you have and how to take care of it. It's a little dated so that I don't know that there's a lot of discussion about digitizing, but it at least gives you an idea of like, what am I looking at in my shoebox or on my shelf? And how do I, what do I do with it to, to move it into the future? Um, there's also uh, on moving image preservation of Puget Sound, works with magnetic media, which is um, video and audio tape. And their resource page is amazing. Um, it's got everything you would ever need to know, <laughs> probably more than you need to know about videotape. And videotape is actually very endangered. And it is because of a lot of different elements kind of coming together at the same time, the the videotape itself is very fragile or getting more fragile by the day. The decks that you need to play it are, are breaking down and there's no way to replace them. And there's almost nobody around to, to fix those decks. Find vendors who can help and who can work with the material, um, but they're out there. And sometimes if you can just like package them up and put them in the mail or do FedEx, do overnight, um, you'll get great results. Um, and being able to understand how to work with those is also is really um, uh, work with vendors. They're, they're happy to help you. We've all, you know, gotten so used to working on our phones and our, on our computers that analog media is a little weird. So when you have that shoebox, just know, and I really have shoeboxes. I, that's why I always use that. I have shoeboxes that are filled with home movies. And so when it comes to the shoebox in your that you're that you've inherited or that you you put in a corner, there are so many resources available to be able to take care of it. So, you know, just if you do some searching, there's there all of us really want to make sure that you can preserve your memories, but also preserve part of visual history. That's part of in particular, the Pacific Northwest's visual history is sitting on shelves and in boxes and it needs to be seen and experienced because it's part of how we tell our story of living in this region. And I think that that's really important. So there's my two cents. <laughs>